Hey guys, Lech here. Time has come. Finally gonna be doing the paneling in my sauna build. I'm using rough cut lumber, which means we're gonna have to prep it. We're gonna have to cut it so it's even. We're gonna have to plane it so it's smooth. And I'm going to be doing probably the tongue groove uh, cut in it to intersect them nicely so everything locks in nicely on the walls. Let me show you guys what we're gonna be paneling if you haven't been following so far. But basically I'm gonna show you this, the full, full process, how to get the boards prepped, cut, and install. If you pre purchasing uh, your boards already ready to go, skip forward in this video, I'll put a comment uh, to the part of installation so that way you can save yourself some time. Let's get started. So every single part of this sauna build so far has been shown or will videos will be posted if I haven't, but if you get to this point, obviously they have. This is our lumber one inch boards. I got some cedar and I got some pine. Uh, couldn't do all cedar, it's too expensive even for rough cut. Um, but I'm gonna do a little mix of both so you have the nice smell and look and economic as well. Uh, my buddy's Roman sauna build that we already have posted on video. We used all pine and it's been probably three, four years. The sauna's working out great so far. So no issues with using pine since it is a dry sauna. So this is the changing room. This is gonna be paneled as well. But first I wanna get the actual sauna completed. So as you see, it's all prepped. We have our insulation uh, slash um, vapor barrier. Insulation is the stone insulation that I used here. I have a video on that. I have a video how to put up the vapor barrier. I have a video how to install these strips. This is so you have air pocket behind your boards. So you don't get, if there's any moisture, it can dry out. As you see, it's all over. So this is what we're gonna be paneling. We have raised walls on the bottom. So our boards are gonna sit on top of these ledges. I also have an install video on this. And that's really it, guys. Let me show you guys the outside. And let's get started on figuring all this out. Windows. They're sealed, but I'm gonna have vents installed in the back here. The stove we use this Morrison Stove Company stove. I have a video on installation of that as well. And our chimney. So that's really it for showing of the sauna. Let's get started with the build. I'm gonna need a planer. I have a review on this guy as well, how to use it. I'm gonna do a separate detailed video how to do the ship lap edge, the tongue groove cut, all that. Maybe a table saw, I usually use a hand saw though, and a planer machine that I still gotta open up and set up, which I'll do a full review on as well. Alrighty, so let's plane some wood. We got our Hercules planer, did a full review on this guy, how to use it, all the features and so on. I'll show you guys some quick clips here as well. But basically, you wanna unlock it, adjust it to height, Run your wood through, and you're done. And we got a nice smooth board. Show you guys a few more close-ups. Cedar and pine, and then we'll move on to get another tongue groove cut. Alrighty, so we're gonna take a pause from planing the boards, and we actually gotta make sure they're all straight and even, as uh, that's step one. They are rough cut boards, so that means the edges are not perfectly straight all the way down. There could be some imperfections, so we gotta make them straight on both sides so they are flush against each other as possible. And then when I cut in the tongue groove, you want it to close in and be as flush as possible. So, I'm doing this with a table saw. Basically, the boards are six inches. I'm marking it to about five and three quarters, cutting one inch off, then putting the clean edge against this guide, putting down to five and a half inches, and cutting the other edge off, which I'll show you guys in a second. If you don't have a table saw, which I personally actually normally don't work with, just grab yourself a level, put it on your board, put it about half an inch or so from the edge, 
whatever you want to take off. Make sure you know you take off enough from each end and you have enough board left over for whatever you're doing. And just mark a straight line down to the end. And you'll notice, you know, it might be like sticking up more here, less here. But once you have your first straight line cut, take your table saw or your hand saw. I mean, hand saw, cut this line, and then measure from this end with your tape measure. Markings, basically, and mark whatever distance you need to cut, and then you just cut off the other side. Hopefully that makes sense. If not, I did make a video on this when I was doing the walls. Um, well, the boards on the walls, not these walls. Um, but we're gonna use the table, so, which will save us some time. Still wanna go over the flatter edge uh, when doing the initial cut. Make sure you flash against the guide. <laughs> from a different angle but that's really the idea once we get all this done we can plane it and then we can start cutting our uh, tongue groove cut <laughs> Alrighty, got a decent amount of boards cut now, cedar and pine, so now we can start doing some testing, so we're going to hit this with the planer, then cut the grooves out, and hopefully it's going to all fit and work as planned. some cedar boards got my first one it came out actually nicer than the pine honestly so let's make sure the right size <laughs> like before. 
So I'm probably gonna be only doing one side on all of these. Um, but if I need to make it thinner, I might hit both just cause it helps to slide on the smoothest surface, the rough surface when you're cutting them. Let's keep going. Alrighty, that's gonna be enough for the planning portion. Now we can start cutting our tongue groove edges on these with the router machine. So we're gonna clean this up, set up the router, and see how that comes out. Alrighty, so in the next step, now we gotta prep our edges, meaning we're gonna cut a tongue and groove cut in them so they can intersect each other and I'll show you guys what that looks like in a second. But basically we gotta set up a router, run the boards through it, get the groove cart, and then switch the bit, run the boards through it again, and cut the, um, the tongue cut. So we're gonna get a few done, and then I'll show you guys a close up how we do it. I'm gonna be cutting the tongue and groove uh, cut using these bits. I might try another way as well. I'm gonna do a more detailed video on how to use this. Uh, but in this video, I'll just show you guys quick clips of how it gets done so we can move on and start actually installing these boards. So we're starting with the tongue bit. Make sure you elevate it to the right spot so you are both almost sticking out or even with the top of the board and then same with the bottom of the board. That way you have an even cut on both sides. And now, give it a go. Also, the back of the board should be touching the inside spinning ring, as you won't be able to cut deeper. So test that out as well. But let's give it a go. Looks good. Now we can try the groove and see if they fit. Clean, smooth, no chips. I like it. So we got a bit installed for the groove part. And now to get it perfectly in the center, one trick is you can just measure uh, the middle of your beam. This is one inch beam, so I've been marked up the half inch mark. And I want to line that up with the gap between these two blades as that marks the middle of the two different blades on here. So line it up, adjust your router, and if it lines up, we are good to cut. There's a groove. Looks good, clean. Now let's fit them. Look at that. Perfect fit.
So our tongue is looking good. Now let's go to groove. So make sure you are lined up in the center of your board, in the middle of your cutter here, and same idea as before. Got our grooves. Let's test fit. Basically, that's the idea with the boards. Nice sealed connection for the sonar walls. Might do a nice little finishing edging on the inside so it's not just like that, but a little cut in. So that will be a different route a bit. But I'll get more of these boards ready and then we can start test fitting and installing inside. Doing a little outside test fitting, lining it up, make sure everything's lining up nicely. You have to push them down in some spots as they're bending. But still trying to figure out, probably gonna have to do just one wood alternating like that. It might look a little weird. Or maybe I'll do one wall, cedar, and the other walls, pine. But maybe no mixing, except like the benches and stuff. Because I just don't have enough cedar to do everything. More than enough pine is gonna be more than enough. But yeah, cedar is scarce. Eh, we'll figure it out. So a quick test fit. Yeah, I'm gonna go solid. I'm not gonna mix them up. It's gonna be too much. So we're gonna go cedar against the stove wall all around here. We're gonna do pine on this wall, pine on the back wall, and then most likely cedar on these walls. Same with the doors. Ceiling, maybe we'll mix it up, we'll see. For now, this is just a test fit right now, nothing's mounted yet. I'll show you guys next how to install it. The only issue I'm gonna have is the cedar boards were a little smaller than the pine, so it's not gonna line up perfectly, but we're gonna cover the edges anyway of trim, so it should come out all right. All right, so one last step before I start mounting them on the walls. As you see, we have just like a straight plane connection. I wanna have something like this, just gives a nice, nicer finish. So I did the first set of boards, and all I used was the basic planer. I didn't have a bit for the router to do it, so I'm doing it by hand. You can also do it with a sander technically. And I might finish all of these with a light sanding, which I'll even round off the edges more. But let me show you guys quickly how I got that done. So I do have it set on the lowest setting possible, and I'm just gonna try to keep it as even as possible and just run it right down the board on an angle. the same with this edge as well. Let 
that's really it. Clean it up, but you guys get the idea. Prep it and move on. I'm gonna sand down a little bit. 220 grit should do it. Yeah, that feels perfect now. The planer finish was nice, but with the 220, now we have a nice smooth finish. You really don't have to go any low or higher, but if you want, 320 will work fine as well. Get them all done and install. Alrighty, let's try nailing down the first wall. So you're gonna need a screw gun or a nail gun. You need one or the other, or nails. Uh, finishing nails I'm using in this case, and I'll show you guys how to mount it so the nails are not visible and we're going to try to minimize or avoid the use of any screws but we'll see how that goes how it all holds up so so i'm going to start with the big boards and then we'll do the small cedar boards on the wall this wall side let's get started Make sure your work surface is clean and my nail gun i'm using 15 uh, gauge nails so they're going to be strong enough to hold it they're two and a half inch and basically make sure you are level you want to start with a level surface and we are starting from the bottom up not from the top down this makes your life a lot easier because you want your tongue uh, sticking out you don't want to have the groove sticking out which can obviously collect water if for some reason any water gets between your boards it will come out this way it will not sit in there so Get the first one in place, make sure it's level. I'm gonna have to raise this just a couple millimeters. But besides that, we should be good. And now, as we already have our strips on our two by fours that I did in another video as well. Now we can just nail it down. I'll start from one end, work my way down. This way, if I need to raise it or anything. And I'll show you guys a close up, but basically, I am nailing this into the bottom of the groove here so that way it's all the way in the board and the other board will cover it when I put it over it just like that actually we have perfectly leveled That first board. This is what I'm talking about. You put in your nail in there, it will be hidden, and we got a secure flush hold. No issues. So now we'll do our second board and so on. I'll show you guys a close up of that, and we'll keep going up. So now we're getting a groove over the tongue. I snap it into place. I have to go on a little angle, angle as now we're flush against the wall. If you get one and in, it should be easy to go down the road now. If you are gonna tap it with a hammer or something, make sure you have a board or something on top of it, a longer piece, so that way you don't damage your lip. But looks like we are good. And now we're gonna nail this one down. And we just keep going up.
So here we go so far, it's looking good. And I like the finish. Yeah, it came out really nice. Now, I'll do that zero section, just to make sure it's all lining up, and then we'll keep going. So ju just like I did with the pine boards, I'm gonna do the same thing with the cedar boards. So I'll show you guys another close-up and how I got the cuts. Setting. I'm angle sitting right on the lip here. And that's really it. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Do another one to make sure we match up. I'm also going to send the cedar as well. It's smooth already, but let's just give it a nicer finish. And I want to make sure I round these edges nicely as well. So if you notice, I also rounded up the back edge that sits against the wall a little bit. It's just gonna help when you have to snap them onto each other so you don't have a rough edge stopping you. Oh yeah, this looks nice. Just gotta wipe it down and we can pop these in. Same idea on this wall. Make sure your first piece is level. Once you have that, we'll just start adding on. And I'm not putting this flush against these you want to leave a little bit of space technically in case any of these are not perfectly flush you don't want to be pushing out and also i am going to put a trim here to connect the both so it won't be exposed anyway and same on this end i'm going to cover this as well with some trim trim a little bit here because I'm sitting on the cement board. That's basically the idea. Alrighty, so for now this board, since we have the window here, we need to cut it off. What I'm going to do is measure the distance of the window and cut it slit out so I still have my perfect grooves here and then I can keep working out and have a full piece.
But here is what I was talking about. But having that air pocket behind your panels. So that's where the strips come into play. Alrighty, we got the little sides done as well. And now the top we had to cut as well. So same as the bottom idea, but we only had to cut half an inch. And as you see, perfect fit. Now we just gotta do some kind of trim around the window. For the last finishing piece, you have to clear this lip, meaning that your last piece has to be cut about half an inch, in my case, shorter than the distance from the edge here to the top. Otherwise, you will not be able to get it in as you gotta get it over the lip to press it on. And this space here is fine because we still got a ceiling which is wider than the space so that's going to cover that and then we're also going to put a trim against it and ceiling will hold this in place but you can still staple it down or screw it down since i have my beam there i can go directly into the wall now i don't need the angle All those nails will be covered when we put our ceiling beams, so we'll be fine. So this wall is basically set. Well, so the last piece of the cedar wall, same idea as the ceiling piece here, you gotta cut it shorter and cut a little notch here. But before I put this one in, I also have the little one that goes there. I'm not gonna be able to get that in if I put this in. So I'm gonna do both of these together. Just snap them in. And pop them in like that. And then we'll just nail these down. Ceiling will come against it, trim will cover all that up. Alrighty, now time to begin cutting the rest of the boards. So like I mentioned, first I gotta cut them to size. On the side so it's even. Then we're gonna plane it. Then we're gonna hit it with the router. Sand that all that. And we can start finishing the rest of the walls. Alrighty, got our next batch of boards fully prepped. Now we can start doing the other walls. I'll move on to the ceiling. And then that other room. Alrighty, time to start on this wall now. Then we'll finish the sides and these sides here. And then we'll be able to do the ceiling last. So same idea as the other side. Let's lay out our first board. Make sure it's nice and level. Nail it down. And then we will work our way up. <clears throat> so one quick tip about sauna building. You know, usually you want the perfect boards. No knots like this in them because after a while they can't get, uh, start getting wet and sticky from the sap or whatever, you know, coming out. These are killed drying boards. So I shouldn't have that issue, but just in case any boards that do have a lot of these, I'm trying to keep them low where it's not as hot and under my bench. I'm still gonna probably put up little uh, cedar bench um, rest um, to lean against, but just in case, gonna keep them low. So just keep going. A scrap piece to just lower it wherever it's sticking up. And this one needs to bend a little bit, so start with one end and work our way up, down, and we're still level.
nice. Also, one more tip. If you're gonna be doing benches, so that means you're gonna have to mount on this wall. Make sure you mark where all your studs are that you're gonna have to screw into later. So I have studs here, I have studs on the sides, and studs here. But as you're doing these boards, you can literally just give yourself a little line that you can erase later. This way, you know where your boards are, and it'll be easier for you to find them later and all that. So I'll do marking like on the bottom, marking here, marking there. Then you can use a level to find out exactly where you're at. Same idea with this finish, cut about half an inch less than the ceiling so you can get your uh, uh, your board over the tongue here. And just pop it on. I'm gonna wedge a board in here so I can put some pressure and then I'm gonna staple it right into the board. up of installing the panels. So, so finishing up these walls, as you noticed, I didn't go cedar because I realized I'm not going to have enough cedar to do both of these sides and then do the benches and possibly the door. So I just went with pine for this as well. Looks great. But now this board here that's going across both sides. These sides are not perfectly even. The reason being because I have a half inch uh, slope on my floor, which means this side is lower than this side. So what I did, I measured the space. I cut about seven eighths of an inch here to the new tongue groove. Now I'm gonna snap this in and then I'll cut out the excess here and the board should be nice and even for the next one to go on top. I shoved this piece of scrap wood from the boards I had with a hammer to put pressure so I'm Nice and even on both sides. Now I can measure and cut off this middle section. Quick peek on the install of that final board I just trimmed. I'm going to 
of a trim here, so not a big deal. And that's that. A couple more, and we'll be done. And there we go. That's what it looks like finished. So now we've got the walls done. Now we do the ceiling. We're probably gonna start on the bottom, work way, uh, our way up, and then we can do the trims to close up all these edges. And then the door. And then we can technically use the sauna while we finish this one and so on. Alrighty, so now we can start doing the ceiling portion of our paneling and we're going flush against this wall. Eighth inch, quarter inch spacing is fine if you have it because you're still going to put the trim, at least most people will. I'm definitely going to do it in the corner walls. But for my first piece, I have a flush cut here. Also, the reason for this being a little narrower than my typical boards, I want to make them even the last board and the first board. Uh, as you know, they will not fit perfectly full size boards. So I'm doing four inch boards at the ends and then the five inch boards, you know, excluding the lip uh, all throughout. So I'm just gonna nail down my first one, same way I did the walls. Go. Nice and flush. Technically, it's fine like that, but if we wanted to trim, we can add trim as well. I'll see when I get to that point, but I'm definitely going to do the trim on the walls as they're not perfect everywhere. So now I'm just going to start adding on the boards, work, work our way up. I'm going to have to work around this chimney section here. But it shouldn't be too complicated. Just keep going to the top. I'll show you guys this and the finish next. All right, we made it to the chimney portion. So over here, basically, I just cut this half an inch shorter than here because I need space to get over the lip. And then I just cut the length of this, came up with this. I'll pop this in. And then just the shorter pieces connecting here. Same thing here if needed. And just move on to the end. And there we go. Then we can put trim around that to keep it closer to the box. And same idea with this piece. You just cut it on the other side basically. And this side is easier to get more flush as there's no lip to go over. We just have a flat cut. So, almost there, guys. So, one thing I should have showed you guys, should have been doing the whole time. You have spacing and you popped your board in, but you still have spacing because maybe, you know, it's rough cut, maybe it wasn't perfect cuts. And you just want to tighten it up, cut a beam, wedge it against your wall or your ceiling. 
the tap. It's gonna push that in. And now you can staple down. Have a nice flush finish. Alrighty, last pieces of the ceiling now. I did not mount this second to last strip yet as I wanted to measure the space and need it. So unfortunately we have about an inch and a half, inch and a quarter space we need to fill instead of just cutting the last board short like we did with our first board, which was the original plan. But the problem is all these boards are cut to size and they're not perfectly, you know, to a quarter inch and millimeter even, you know, so after 15 or so boards, we lost some. So anyway, no problem. I already cut my piece. What I'm probably gonna do is put that piece onto this piece and then put them in together as I have the flush end here that I need to go against the wall. It's gonna make it easier than trying to pop this in after I have this one in. So I'm gonna pop that off and try to do both at once. to push that in there. We can try a pry bar. There we go, that works. Just need to staple it down, do our trim for the gaps, and we are almost there. So to get this indent to put my trim around the tile and the boards, I use the straight bit on the router, and I basically run two lines because it's only a like half inch one. I run one, so now I'm doing the second one, and that will probably give me enough space to do a nice coverage. All right, so for the trim, I long all the wall gaps. Basically prepped these, I just showed you guys already a second ago, and I'm just running them along, hit them with a few finishing nails. I might do some finishing screws as well to give it more secure fit and keep everything nice and tight. Over here by the tiles, I have that indent. So like I showed in planar, I cut this indent here. The deeper end will go against the tiles. This was it here. A few finishing nails, maybe some screws to hold it down even better. And we got a nice clean finish. I'll do the pine along the walls, ceilings, and so on. Show you guys some close-ups. I'm almost there. So I also have to now do the trim around this window as I didn't have boards wide enough to come all the way out here. But I came up with this just like I did for this piece here. I did the same idea, a little indent to accommodate the board sticking out. And then I'll drop this. It's gonna be nice, flush finish. And I'll go all the, way, all the way around, screw down with finished nails, it's going to look good. And there we go, finished product. That's simple. Might do some finishing screws later, but for now we are good. Basically, most of the trim is done. I'm not doing the corners because I got to do the benches. So these corners are going to stay. Just got to finish the other side here. I got the top done already. And this edge. I have such a clean finish here. I don't want to put 
put one back here, but it's gonna look weird if I don't have one, so I'll probably put a trim there as well. But basically, now I'm gonna start on the benches. So I'm gonna do a separate video for that, but I'll probably give you guys a sneak peek in this one as I gotta finish the trim still. Stay tuned. Alrighty guys, here's <clears throat> Alrighty guys, as you see the <clears throat> Alright, as you see the benches are done. I have a separate video on how to do that. But now I can basically do my trim finishes. So this one above the bench, then below the bench, and same here and so on. And I also pick and I still have to finish this one piece. And also picked up these trim screws that I used for installing the benches here. Stainless steel, picked them up in Home Depot. They've been working awesome, so I might use them to tighten up some of the trim as well, just for more secure hold to hold over time. And this window too, definitely. So stay tuned. So final look of all the paneling, as you see, benches are done as well. But I mainly wanna show you guys all the trim that's done now. I did run the sun a couple times already. Smells great, feels great. It's nice and hot. Here's the vent covers. I did a whole video how to do these as well. And then the benches, obviously. Got videos on those. Everything's working out great. Got the light installed. We got a video on that as well. And the doors, video on that as well. But that's it for the paneling portion, guys. Thank you for watching. Please follow the rest, see the rest of the build. Subscribe, follow, any questions, let me know. Thank you.